welcome to the Chris Hatcher Show, presented by Chick-fil-A and Hoover Commons. Coach, coming off of a, a big game this past Saturday night. Unfortunately, the Bulldogs came up short 36-26, but boy, there were, a, there were a lot of excitement around that game. Uh, talk about the experience from your viewpoint as a coach and then what your team experienced this past Saturday. First of all, the only disappointing thing is that we didn't finish and win the game. I thought that our guys played with tremendous effort um, I've told them on Monday that that is the new standard of effort that I expect from our football team each and every week. Um, you know, for about 56 minutes, we outplayed Florida State. And, um, you know, we're kind of like a, a NASCAR event. We were leading on the last lap, and we ran out of gas. And, um, you know, it was, it was a tough defeat. Um, but I'm really proud of the way our guys competed in that environment. You know, going into the game, we talk about it to relish the opportunity because at this level, you only get one opportunity a year to play on the national stage and, yeah. and that type of environment, um, unless you make the playoffs and you go very deep in it. But um, it was a great trip. Um, you know, we we're plagued a little bit by a long delay to start the game. Um, but again, I thought, you know, we executed well. Again, what, when we did make mistakes, we made up with it for tremendous effort. That's probably the hardest I've ever seen a football team play um, since I've been, I started as a head coach 19 years ago. Well, uh, I know that moral victories is not something that we want to talk about too much because I know the guys left with a loss, but you know it was a great night for Sanford University though, particularly Sanford football. Uh, trending on Twitter, a lot of attention nationally through ESPN and those types of opportunities. Talk about what that means for the program as you move forward. Uh, well, I think it's huge, you know, that you, you, you go on a national stage so you're, you're getting a lot of notoriety that you normally don't get. And, you know, by being the football program, it gives a lot of notoriety to the Sanford University mm -hmm. um, academic brand as well. And we take great pride in that. But playing like we did, having that delay kind of put us in our own yeah. slot, yeah. you know, which was a blessing in it disguise. Was. The good yeah. Lord was looking over us yes. from a branding standpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, I, th that, that publicity is, um, you know, I don't know that you can put a dollar figure on it. And then on top of that, we played extremely well, yeah. um, really bodes well um, for the, the exposure that our team and university got. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, can take what we learned from that game, turn it into a positive and continue to play at a high level the rest of the season. Yeah. Let's talk about offense for just a moment. Uh, you played a quality ACC defense. Had over 500 total yards on offense. Devlin throws for 475 yards. Uh, KJ comes in with a 200-yard performance at receiving. And don't want to miss Andrew Harris. Also had a great game as well at receiver. Rolling got a touchdown on the ground. Talk about your offensive performance. Well, at first, it starts with our offensive line. I mean, we threw the ball 60 times against one of the most formidable fronts mm -hmm. in the ACC, probably minus Clemson and didn't give up a sack. So, you know, our offensive line played extremely well. Devlin got rid of the ball fast. Um, you know, and it, it was kind of both of those guys worked together. We ran the ball well when we needed to. Um, but, you know, I, I think you, you could talk, highlight everybody. But what was really good to see, to me, the best player on the field on both sides was Kelvin McKnight. And for him to be able to go back home and play like he did was something special. I talked to his mother after the game, she was ecstatic. Um, so all in all, we had a great night. Again, you turn it over five times, it's yeah. very difficult to win any games, yeah. especially a game against a, an opponent such as Florida State. Sure. And talking about defense, you know, coming into the season, defense was a little bit of a concern because there was just some unknowns on that side. But you go through three quarters, you, you're holding Florida State to 14 points. Uh, you, you look and all of a sudden you've got a guy like Aaron Harris, 13 tackles, SOCON Defensive Player of the Week. I thought the defensive line held up well against a good offensive line too. Well, you know, you're right. You know, going into the year, the roles are, were kind of reversed. Last season, we had a very veteran defense, young offense, and the offense kind of had to find its way while yeah. the defense carried us through the entire season. This year, it's kind of reversed. You got a more of a veteran offense and a younger defense at certain spots. Um, but the reason we were in that game was because of the supreme defensive effort our guys gave. Um, you know, we, were, we, we really got tired at the end. Um, Bill DeTavio is one of the best defensive coordinators in the game. He's the best that I've ever had. 
Um, and he put together a great plan, but more importantly, we executed. And I keep going back to this one word, Kevin. We played with tremendous effort. You did. And um, what made me really proud on that side of the ball was we had a lot of injuries. We had a lot of guys have to come out of the game. And whoever the next guy in line, they just went in and played extremely well. So yeah. if we can play that type of defense all year, we have a chance to have a very special season. Absolutely. Special teams, quickly. I want to give a shout-out to Mitchell Finneran, a Special Teams Player of the Week for Southern Conference this week, kicking the ball well. And we had a surprise punter in that game as well, to, to some of our surprises. Was that just an extra wrinkle you were putting in the game? Um, well, well, first of all, let's talk about Mitchell. He's done a fine job. He's a true freshman, mm -hmm. um, and he, he went in, and he, he you know those field goals he kicked were huge. You know, the last one, uh, put us up by five, yes. which um, you know could have been the game winner. Things had to turn out a little different, but um, he's been playing well. We've asked him to handle the kickoff duties. He's done a really good job yeah. there. Um, that entire operation, Tyler Queen, Cooper Cross, um, yeah. you know they've done extremely well. And then um, the punting duties, um, you know, right now that was an area that we lost Austin Barner last mm -hmm. season. Um, so Devlin Hodges is kind of doing that. We have a couple other guys we're working into that role. This week, you know, we may showcase someone else at that position. But, we, we, you know, each week we play who we think gives us the best chance to win. And having him as the punter last week, we felt like um, that gave us the best shot. Sure. Well, let's go ahead and preview this coming week's game. Big game coming up, our first conference game. I know the guys have got to feel confident going, confidence going into this first conference game against Mercer. Well, I think starting back in the spring, I, I felt a sense of confidence, um, you know, from our team, a, a team that has great belief in themselves. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, they, they're a team that um, handles their business each and every day, very businesslike. Um, and then they kind of just open it up on Saturday. And um, I saw that again this past weekend. You know, the big thing when you, you play a game like that is you, you got to get over it quickly. And, yeah. um, you know, you can't let that one affect the way you play the next game in a negative manner. So, you know, we talked um, on Monday about, hey, um, you know, don't be overconfident because Mercer and the rest of our conference don't care how close we played right. Florida State. That, that makes no difference to mm -hmm. them. Um, but if we can take the things that we did well and play at that standard of effort, and I know I've, I've said effort a million times on this yeah. show today, but that's the new standard of effort. If we can do that and learn from a few mistakes we made the past two weeks, you know, we got, we got a chance to be a good football team. But again, it's a faceless opponent. Most important game we played this week because it's the only one they let right. us play. And it's no different. We're always worried about us. I don't coach the opponent, so we're always focused on being the best we can be. And we feel like if we are, we can be in every ball game moving forward. And it's Parents Weekend here at Sanford University. It should be exciting. You should have a great crowd. Well, I, I, I am. I'm excited about that. I mean, this one in homecoming is traditionally our largest crowds. But, you know, let's go back to week one, yeah. Kevin. I mean, it was great the largest attendance. opening crowd Sanford football has had in a, maybe ever, but quite some time. Um, but I think more importantly, it was the largest gathering of students at a football game. Um, in the history of the school, and yeah. you know, and I, I, I say, you know, our, our marketing department has done a great job. Um, I think our players have done a really good job of becoming integrated in the, the academic community on campus, um, and then they put a good product on the field. So yeah. um, we're excited. We got something to, you know, a little momentum. Um, you know, it, we we need a big crowd because I tell you, it helps. Yeah with the momentum up and the, the, the ebbs and flows of the game to have a, a good crowd backing you as opposed to backing the opponent. Sure, and we look forward to seeing many of you at the game this Saturday, a two o'clock kickoff against Southern Conference rival Mercer. Coach, thank you for being with us today. And remember, this is sponsored by Chick-fil-A at Hoover Commons. We'll see you next week.